Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's text is from the Epistle lesson from 1 Peter, the first chapter. All flesh is like grass, and all is glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And that is the good news that was preached to you. This is our text. So congratulations. You're moving out of the T-ball league. And now you're ready to play some real baseball. Up till now, things have been pretty well placed up there for you. Your parents have seen to it that you've been in church. Your parents have seen to it that you've been in confirmation class, that you've gotten your homework done. And now, the pitches are going to be coming at you a little faster. As you head off into high school, as you head off into college, as you head out into your first jobs or wherever the world takes you. There are going to be temptations thrown your way. There are going to be distractions from walking the path of discipleship with your Lord Jesus Christ, like the disciples to Emmaus did this day. There are going to be temptations to turn away from the word that warms your heart, to turn away from the breaking of the bread wherein you recognize your Lord Jesus Christ and your faith, very much like the flower of the grass, could easily wither and fall. So what is it that keeps you alive? The grass withers, the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. So, as Ryan wants you to know, be faithful, even to the de point of death, and I will give to you the crown of eternal life. Revelation 2.10. Faithful to death? How, how many of us could get a straight A on remaining faithful to the Lord? Not just to the point of death, but how about making it through today, being faithful to the Lord? So that's going to take a, a, whole lot of, a whole lot of help, a whole lot of comfort. Casey would have us learn from Luke 11, 28, Blessed are they that hear the word of God and obey it. To hear the word of God is one thing. To keep it in your heart where it influences every action of your body, that's quite another. Where in the world can we find this kind of love that supports us? Kayla, your verse is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. In that love, we find the power to love one another. Indeed, that has a love that goes far beyond any love we could have for ourselves. And if it goes beyond the love we have for ourselves, then it goes beyond the love that we could have for our neighbor who we ought to love as ourselves. This is where we get the power to face the challenges that come at us day by day. So we don't need to worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. That's Tyler's verse, Matthew 6, 34. We don't worry about tomorrow because we know who holds the keys for tomorrow. We know who has the plans. Jeremiah 29, 11, Grayson's verse. For I know what the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future, a future that does not mean falling away from the means of God's grace, a future that means that you hold steadfast in the true faith to life everlasting. For if God has plans for us, and God loves us, how in the world, how in the world could those plans involve living away from the presence of God and where He is to be found in His Word and sacraments? He will go with us wherever we go. Ivy, Joshua 1 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will go with you wherever you go. So where are you going? What schools are you going to head off to? What careers are you going to have? Do you know? When I was in 8th grade, I was going to go into politics. 
When I was in ninth grade, I was going to go into law. When I was in 11th grade, I was going to go into business. When I graduated from high school, I was going into engineering. Like Jonah, I was going everywhere but where the Lord wanted me to go. It wasn't until I was well into college that finally answered the Lord's call to serve Him as a pastor. Where will your lives take you? Into full-time church work, into service industries, into management, into raising families or living single? Where does the Lord have you going? We don't need to worry about that. For we know that our Lord God will go with us wherever we go. Alexander Busateri reminds us from John 8, 12, that Jesus said, I am the light of the world, and whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Isn't that nice not to have to walk in darkness? These days, those of us who live in the perma-glow of the city really don't know what darkness is all about. But if you get stuck in the country, if you plow your little sports car into a snowdrift in the middle of winter, out on a country road about 10 miles out of town, you will know what darkness is. And when that happens, I challenge you to find your white dog in the middle of a snow-packed field. You can't see anything. But that night that I did just such a thing, there was a farmstead just over the hill, and that little light, that little light over the hill, showed me the direction that I needed to go. And as I got closer to that light, then it became clearer and clearer and clearer where I needed to step. I always thought I'd go back before the snow melted and trace just how many barbed wire fences I had crossed or you know, what kind of streams or what other kind of perils I crossed on that perilous journey that one night. Never got around to it. But the light of our Lord takes us through those perils of this world and into a life that has no end. In the Gospel lesson for today, we have some disciples who were on their own journey. And they started off by day. And they were awfully weary on that trip because they were very confused about what had happened to their Lord Jesus Christ. For them, that light was not shining very clearly. For them, the information was all completely garbled. It's like when your pastor starts talking to you in Latin during class. You guys like that, don't you? What? It's when I start spouting different theological terms that you have no idea what they mean. So we break it all down for you. What? Those disciples had heard that Jesus was dead. A couple reports that he was alive, but... Not a whole lot of hope to build on. And their journey was long. Seven miles from Jerusalem. How many of you would like to go on a seven mile walk right now? Anybody? Be kind of tired after that, wouldn't you? So it gets to be the end of the day. It is toward evening. The day is far spent. Stay with us, Lord. They sat down. They got some food ready. So now you know it's really dark out. And... Jesus reveals himself by taking bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples. And they go, aha! We know who this is now. <coughs> and energized by that sacramental giving of our Lord Jesus Christ. Energized by the presence of the Lord in their lives. Energized by their hearts having been warmed by that word. What did they do? That night they returned to Jerusalem. They didn't take a bus. They didn't jump into an SUV and drive. They walked it seven miles back. That's the strength that God gives you with His presence for you. His presence is given to you this day in a very special way, in the sacrament of His body and blood. As Aaron would have us remember from Matthew 26, 28, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, for the forgiveness of sins. He is our original Red Cross donor, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
His gift of blood saved our lives. <coughs> Sarah Christensen wrote a nice paper for us for uh, telling us about the symbols that we have in the church. And she summed her paper up by talking about how all these things point us to the cross. All these things point us to what Jesus has done for us. And then she said something like, why would anyone chase after <coughs> anything else? Why would anyone seek after anything else? When we know where Jesus is, and where, when we know the strength that he gives us to meet the challenges ahead, and where we know that we can find what is true and right and pure and honorable, why would we look for anything else? For we know where Jesus is, and he has promised us in Sarah's verse, Matthew 28, 20, Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Well, there you have it. Your verses have preached a sermon today. Thank you for writing it for me and giving me the week off. That was great. If your nine verses can preach a little short sermon like this, what sermons are your nine lives going to lead now? The good news that was preached to the people in Peter's day is that although flowers fall and grass withers, the word of the Lord endures forever. Will that word endure in your lives? And if so, how will people be able to tell? Will they be able to see the hope that is in your heart, the joy that comes from knowing that you are one of the redeemed whose place is in heaven forevermore? Will they see it in your actions, which seek not after the pleasure of the soul, but the welfare of your neighbor? Will they be able to hear it in your words of tenderness and care for one another? Or will that message be lost in crassness, in lustful jokes, in tearing down one another? We know where Jesus is, and we want him to live within us. And if he lives within us, surely we will also join him in being the light of the world. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. May you never separate yourselves from where you hear that word and where you receive that precious word into your very body. Our Lord Jesus Christ, and to whom be all glory and honor, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in our Lord Jesus. Amen. <coughs>